Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing an unboxing and a assembly of the Ender 7 and giving you my initial thoughts about this pretty unusual printer. Okay, so let's crack this puppy open. It was quite a bit heavier than I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't know if that's due to the the different configuration of it, or the, you know, the construction of it probably, uh, but it was quite a bit heavier than I had planned on. That's interesting, a little glasses cleaner. I'm not sure why that's there, but okay. All right, so we had some foam, which we'll keep. User's manual right up top. We'll ignore that for now, and probably through the whole thing. So you've got a little bit of filament here. Uh, what do we got here? We've got 0.5 kilograms. So that's nice. It's always nice when you get a little bit of filament to start off in case you are, you know, if you're new to it and you forget that maybe most printers don't give you a little bit of filament. We've got the little box here. What do we got in here? So we got power. Well, that's nice. You got a little, uh, they give you a couple extra nozzles. You got a micro SD card. That's nice. Looks like some. Uh, wire uh, holders, some wires, some tie downs, and of course all your screws, spatula. I always think, oh my god, not another spatula, but I use them all the time, you know, so it's actually good to have. And you've got a tool kit here, which is nice, uh, nice little angle iron there, that's actually pretty good. Some um, nozzle cleaners. And something in a little box here. I don't know what that is. Let's take a look. A little like sort of envelope thing. What is that? Ah, clippers. Again, I always say so many clippers, so many clippers. But I ruin these things constantly. I put them in resin. I put them, you know, I cut something I'm not supposed to cut with it. And they get so dull, they're worthless. So I love getting extra clippers all the time because uh, I will definitely use them. Okay, so we're gonna set the little tool things over here. Let's take a look at the rest of this. Now, as you might have seen in other videos or images of this, it's a different sort of setup for the printer. You, It almost looks like it was cut in half. You've got a, a top half, bottom half, and the bed is in the middle. And uh, it's pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look. The first big chunk we've got here. Okay, so we've got the nozzle and the top piece and this actually sits like this uh, so that's interesting so we're gonna just set that here without completely destroying it or hitting the remote which would turn the video off and with my luck I wouldn't know that it was off and I would do this whole part of the video uh, to nothing and then be very angry at the end now you're wondering has that happened yes it has happened. <laughs> that's why I know to move that remote so let's go ahead and that's oddly packed. Let's take that out. More plastic. Okay, so let's put this aside. That is the side, one of the sides. You got the other side. Again, you know, all aluminum, very well constructed. Very well packed. A lot of, a lot of foam in here. Uh, I don't know what that is. We'll find out, I'm sure. This must be the bed. And again, this is a very different setup for a printer. So here's the bed right here. You know, it's totally separate because it doesn't, uh, this all doesn't attach like a normal 3D printer. So that's really interesting. Uh, okay, so we got some more metal pieces. That's gonna be the filament. We got another side. I'm gonna throw that over there. And, well, that's a heavy one. And then we have the bottom of the printer, the base, the electronics, uh, all the boards, everything. And as you can see, no bed on there yet, right? Really, really interesting setup. Um, this is gonna be a fun printer to put together. When you put tons of printers together, it's kind of like boom, boom, boom. But uh, I might have to look at the instructions for this because I'm not sure how the, all these pieces and parts go together. So uh, I'm going to crack that book open and we're going to get started putting it together. Okay, so let's go ahead and start putting this together. And I am actually going to be looking at the instructions because this printer is just different enough that uh, I want to make sure I'm getting everything correct. So while I'm putting this together, we'll talk a little bit about it. 
Um, we are dealing with, uh, like I said, a, a fairly unusual uh, construction for the printer, but it's going to give us some benefits. Of course, this printer is being touted as a very high-speed printer, able to do 250 millimeters per second. Personally, I would, don't ever print anything or would never really print anything that fast because, of course, the faster you make something, no matter if it says so or not, you're not going to get a, as good a quality as if you printed it slower. That being said, where I would definitely use that type of speed is if I was printing something that uh, I was doing as a test print or you know that was something that you know was a, maybe a useful item that was replacing something and I didn't really care about the quality but you know if I'm doing a helmet or if I'm doing something I'm definitely going to be printing things a lot slower okay we're gonna go ahead and put on the z-axis goes in pretty simple with four uh, M5 screws one of them gets a lock washer so make sure you do that uh, I knew that because I did the instructions they're open <laughs> which usually doesn't happen but uh, I'm happy I did for this because I definitely wouldn't have done that I would have looked at them later and wondered why they were there so this is uh, more that I look at the instructions a pretty easy uh, build uh, anybody I think can put one of these together pretty quickly uh, this will take me of course longer because I'm talking while I'm doing it and that always takes more time now uh, a little bit about the printer itself I'm going to leave these a little loose right now and then go back and tighten everything up I like to do that uh, big thing is remember to tighten things up at the end when you're done so what do we have with this printer? I'm going to be looking at my notes so I don't forget anything um, of course we've got uh, you know X, Y uh, Z linear rail system going on we've got a um, it's over here we'll look at it in a minute a metal extruder with dual gear extrusion so that I guess is supposed to help us maybe a little bit with the speed um, but unfortunately it's not an all metal hot end so you can only go to temperatures around 260 uh, so maybe with PLA that sh that'll be okay but I think going if you try to do something like a um, uh, pet G or an ABS uh, you'd really have a hard time going 250 milliseconds uh, that would be a little bit tougher so let's go ahead and put on these side rails now there is a part that goes up top it's this part with this little screw I think you would find that out pretty quickly when the part wouldn't fit but they make sure to call it out in the instructions okay so let's go ahead and put this guy on now it looks like the top part of the z-axis brace goes right underneath this and then you've got to raise took me a few minutes to do this you've got to raise up the other two mounts to match that and the mounts go below the bed bracket so this is uh, not going to be easy to do with one person but i think i can manage this we got to just find these there's one it's just gonna be a question of you know starting it and getting a few in there like I said it takes uh, quite a few screws to actually hold this thing on but the key thing is and it's something I didn't do I was trying to do something totally different when I first put this on the main thing to remember is the actual bracket of the bed goes on top of the mounts on the z-axis and then you raise up the two side mounts to meet it and then this way it'll go on pretty neat so i'm just going to cut this because this is going to take me forever to put all these little m4 screws on okay so i got the top uh, m4s mounted now four go into the back of it to really keep it really secure i have to say that uh took probably what will end up being the longest part of this build <laughs> which is putting all those screws back on and getting everything lined up what i would recommend is to again not tighten them all sort of crazy tight so you've got a little bit of movement in there so that you can line all the other holes up uh because it's uh if i had just tightened the first one or the second one down really really tight i would never be able to sort of shift it around a little bit to make sure that the the, the uh the holes lined up but uh, the back's going on a lot easier. And uh, once I finish this, we'll head over to the next step. Now a little bit about the bed. It is the sort of standard uh, carborundum glass. Uh, it's got the metal clips on, which are nice. And again, 250 by 250 by 300. Bed temperature, I think it maxes at 100. Uh, but it's a nice heated bed. Uh, it's got that nice check string. And I'm looking forward to 
printing something out on this guy. All right, next up, the top component. Again, really weird, right? It's like we're building a cake. We got the base, we got the filling, and then we got the top. I don't know if that's a cake. It sounds more like a pie, but let's get started. Okay, so here is the top end. It, of course, has the extruder. Uh, it's got some motors on it, of course. Uh, let's go ahead and get this guy on. Uh, looks like we have four screws here that line up, and, of course, more on the X rails. So strange. Let's see if I can get this around. Okay. And... Okay, so it looks like, uh, got some, ca oh there it is, I see, I see. There's a little screw head up the top that lines up with a hole that's in this top part and it wasn't lining up. So it was very wobbly and I was very concerned. Okay, so let's go ahead now and these are the M5 screws. I'm gonna put four of those in, two on the sides, and then we're gonna be ready to start hooking up some of the little pieces, parts, uh, filament holder, uh, connect all the cables, and then start running this thing. I have to say, in all honesty, those were the four hardest screws I have ever had to put in almost anything, I think, in my entire life. These four uh, back screws on the top component. Uh, a little bit due to placement. Uh, you can tell like an engineer put those screws there and didn't, you know, take into account hands or the tools that we're gonna need to actually make them go in. Uh, but I got them in. A little bit too was, I think, off with the threading. But uh, other than that, uh, they, they went in, but uh, it took a little bit of time, it took a little bit of time. Okay, now let's go ahead and put on the filament spool holder. It goes on the side here with the spool holder facing out. It goes on with a couple M4s. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that on, and then we'll go ahead and start working on connecting up the cabling. Okay, next up is just this little piece of plastic. It's really just uh, cosmetic. It goes in behind the bed where all those... M4 screws were just to just for looks uh, and it just snaps into place okay so let's go ahead and connect all the wiring it's pretty simple you've got a three connector here that feeds all the wire or all the motors up here so we're just gonna go ahead and snap that into place and they give you these neat little Creality clips they're kind of neat they say Creality on them they're not 3d printed they're molded and they snap in the back to hold the cable in place. So that's kind of neat, so it doesn't go flying all over the place. So let's go ahead and snap those on. Okay, and lastly, cable-wise, we're gonna connect the Z motor. That goes right down here. So we're just gonna pop that in. Boom. And for the heater bed. So we're gonna put that in. One thing I love, really, are these little clips here, because they really hold that cable in very nicely. Um, I like some good cable management, especially when you've got a lot of printers and there's all sorts of stuff around. Uh, I really like how those snap into place and really hold that flush. It's really, uh, really a nice little detail. I mean, it's something simple, but you know, to think of it and make sure that the clips even look good uh, is a really nice touch. Okay, so all our cables are connected, and we're ready to do some little tweaks to the rails to make sure everything is running really smoothly. Okay, now last thing is we want to make sure that the wheels here are in the grooves. Uh, we want to sort of spin them, and if they can spin really easily, what we want to do is use the little wrench here and tighten up those uh, V-nuts, or whatever they're called, uh, that will tighten the... tighten the... There we go, the wheels so that they don't freely spin. Because you want them to grip in there and make sure that they're they're not just sliding, that they're actually helping uh, move evenly the bed up and down. So now that we made sure all those things are not spinning, they've got a good grab, uh, we're ready to go. But wait, <laughs> we aren't ready to go. Always, always be sure to check the voltage. Uh, a lot of times these will come from China and the voltage is gonna be different. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check that. 
And yes, that was not correct. So you use a little screwdriver that they give you. You push it over to whatever voltage is correct in your country so that when you plug it in, it doesn't go zap. Because that would suck <laughs> to ruin it right off the bat. All right, so this looks pretty sharp. Now, if you're interested in picking up one of these, you can go ahead in the description below. I've got links and you can pick those up. They are affiliate links. If you buy from those links, it helps out the channel and I would really appreciate it. So let's power this guy up, standard screen. Uh, really a nice sharp looking display screen though. And I was really impressed at how touch sensitive it is. I mean, you just, it just works. Uh, your standard screen here, you've got your extruder temperature and your bed temperature temperature, your print, your temp, your settings. So in settings, you've got leveling and adding filament in, things like that. And you also have, uh, of course, you know, where you can heat up your uh, extruder right off the bat, turn your fan on and off. And then, of course, if you hit print, it would be listed there. I don't have a card in, so you don't see anything. So let's go ahead and do some leveling. And I'm going to use the auxiliary leveling that you know it sends it to the home and then to the four corners this is sped up of course but you know it would be nice if it was that fast right so you start in the center and then as you remember the keypad had the four corners you can go ahead and click each corner and it'll send it there and then you use those little wheels like you would normally uh, level a bed to get it keyed in really well now would it be great if it had auto leveling sure but this took me literally 30 seconds and it was ready to go so i went ahead and preheated the nozzle and started feeding the filament up through the sensor now this is zeal tech filament if you're interested in it the links are below you can get a discount if you use the coupon code that's in the description i fed it up mostly by hand and then i used the refuel to feed filament up through and as you can see man it comes out of that just beautifully i love that when that happens. So I've got the card, it's a mini, we put it in, we hit print, and I'm gonna print the bunny. And this is a really neat um, uh, time lapse because the bed lowers, so you don't have the sort of the head jerking around so much, and there's your final print just sort of coming out like that. It's an interesting look for uh, time lapse. So for the test, what I did was I printed out uh, benchies and bunnies and this was a little test print that was on the disc so what I did was I printed out the benchy and bunnies all using the Cura uh, slicer that was included on the disc and I ran them at their standard settings so I ran them at the I'm looking at my notes I ran them at the super quality dynamic quality standard and low so super quality is 1.2 millimeters an inch uh, dynamic is 1.6 uh, standard is 2.0 and low is 2.8. So I ran those all the benches at that with the 250 millimeters a second being their speed. But then I ran one benchy and one bunny at the super, which is 1.2 millimeters a second or 1.2 millimeter uh, layer height. And I ran it at a 50 millimeters a second to see if that speed difference uh, would affect its quality. And what I want to do is we'll get in close on these little examples so you can see just how speed affected the actual print, both time-wise and print quality-wise. So let's take a closer look at these. Okay, so this print is, of course, the Benchy, and I did it with the Cura slicer settings that came with the printer, and it was a super quality, which is 1.2 millimeter layer height, and this was at 250 millimeters a second, and it came in print time-wise an hour and 49 minutes. And you can see it looks pretty darn good, actually. Um, if we start to take a closer look, if we look at some of the sides, we can see some, I'm trying to catch it in the light, some definite weirdness there, some sort of bubbling that's happening, uh, a little bit of a roughness around the bow area here, or the side of the boat and some on the hull. Right in here you can sort of see that raised pieces there. Uh, but all in all, I mean look at the side of this. Look how smooth that is. That is incredibly smooth. Uh, there's some roughness around that one portal, uh, but you know, not too bad at all. We turn it on this side. 
Again, we don't see a lot of scaling. Again, some roughness in the overhang there. If we get in there, you can see that. But still pretty smooth on the bow. Some little, you know, bloops there, you know, a little roughness. If we look up top, again, really quite satisfied with that. Uh, if I was doing this as like a little sort of print to give to somebody for fun, that wouldn't be too bad. Uh, it's got some jagged lines. It's got a few things uh, in the back as far as the writing. You definitely can't read that license plate wise, uh, but I chalk that up to the speed. But you know, for 250 millimeters a second, an hour 49 print, the quality on that is pretty darn good. And later on, we're gonna actually compare this to one printed at the same model printed at 50 millimeters a second. But let's go ahead and look at the next one down, which is the dynamic print setting, and it is 1.6 millimeter layer height. And again, this is at 250 millimeters a second. And, you know, so we're going up a little bit more in layer height, and you start to see that in the hull. You can see some layer lines coming in, definitely right in there. Uh, a lot more roughness. Uh, in the overhang here in the back, you can see that coming in. Uh, not very legible for the license plate. And mostly just some really more roughness right in here where the overhangs are uh, on the top of the ship up here. Especially those layer lines really starting to creep in and some more little errors coming through. But still, very, very good quality. And actually, the dynamic came in at an hour 40. Now, the weird thing is you're going to see a lot of things coming through here that uh, the times are all going to be very close because, you know, the printhead doesn't need to move a whole lot for this thing. It's not a huge thing where times are going to be mattering. It's all a pretty tight print. So there's the dynamic quality. And again, 250 millimeters a second, pretty darn good. Okay, so now what we have here is the standard quality, and that's 0.2 millimeter layer height, again at a 250 millimeter per second. And that one came in at, oddly enough, an hour seven. It was a really big jump in time. Uh, I actually printed it twice, because I thought I got it wrong. But no, I didn't, it was an hour seven. And again, this is a point two. I mean, I guess not really too surprising. We are really jumping up in kind of lowering the print quality. And it starts to really show. You can see in the straight areas here on the sides of the boat and on the top, we're starting to get a lot of scaling. We're starting to get a lot of jagginess. The overhang is looking pretty rough. And we're getting some sort of bubbling and some little bloops coming out here on the side. And we're starting to see, of course, the um, layer lines more, but still not too bad. I mean, that is not a really bad print there. Uh, if I printed this out, I would be happy with it, especially if I was going to take a little sandpaper to it. But you can see, especially over here, these layer lines really starting to get, or uh, the overhang really starting to get a little bit jagged. And of course, uh, you know, the writing is not visible whatsoever in the back. But overall, again, not a bad print. So far, you know, at, you know, all the qualities, uh, yes, the, the top quality, the, um, the super quality has been the best, I think, so far. But these ones down the line, if you're looking to get a quick print, have not been too shabby. Now let's take a look at the low quality. And of course, this is the low quality print at 0.28 going at 250 millimeters a second and if we take a look at it we can definitely see that the quality is really not up to the other ones uh, we're seeing a lot of layer lines it might be hard to pick up in the video itself but the layer lines are much more pronounced you can kind of see them the banding sometimes they're a little thicker sometimes they're a little thinner uh, the overhang area here is very rough by my thumb we're getting some blotching and some blooping of the filament there the top of the boat, we're also getting some really craziness in the overhangs. Uh, it just looks rough. But at the same time, I'm going to keep saying this, it doesn't look that bad for the speed and the quality of it. I mean, look at this part of the bow there. That's 
pretty sharp right there I mean that is pretty darn smooth take a little bit of sandpaper to this and you know you wouldn't have too bad of a print again the uh, time difference is really where you're gaining here this low quality print at 250 millimeters a second came in though at just under an hour at 53 minutes so if you're trying to run a prototype of something if you could bang something out in that much time 53 minutes boom you're done you can look at it you can see what you need to change so it is pretty cool in that respect now the last thing i want to look at is the one i was really curious about and that's the bench you printed out at super which is 1.2 but i printed this one at a 50 millimeter layer height so i can see if slowing the machine down helps with quality because that just makes sense right and here is the actual benchy we looked at earlier that was printed out the super 1.2 but printed at the 250 so this one right here is the 50 millimeters a second and that is the 250 and if you take a look at the sides of that you can see that they're almost identical uh we've got that same kind of uh, blooping there, same kind of blobbing of the filament on the side. The overhangs look almost identical, and I was really, really surprised that the 50 wasn't like sort of just, just tax smooth compared to the 250. And if we turn them over and we look at them from the other side, again, they're virtually identical. Now, if I'm looking at them sort of outside the camera and I'm holding them, I can see that the 50, this one on this side, the overhangs look a little bit cleaner. They're not as rough as the overhangs on the 250. Um, I can also see uh, that I'm getting more detail in the uh, license plate area in the back when I look at it. Uh, I'm getting a little less banding around things. So... Yes, I am getting a better quality print from that Benchy, but it's not by a ton. So that really kind of surprised me. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more testing, printing out a helmet next at 250 millimeters a second, and then printing one out at 50 millimeters a second. And that'll be the next one. That'll be sort of the full review. But looking at these, and I was going to show the bunnies, but I decided not to because they show pretty much the same thing. The 50 millimeters a second and the 250 millimeters a second don't show a whole lot of difference, which really, really surprised me. So I might be running this thing at 250 millimeters a second, you know, quite a bit, which is really surprising. So this is my, just my initial look at this printer. I managed to print uh, some benchies out, managed to print some other test prints out. I'll show those later, but I'll be running this through a lot more tests to see how it handles all sorts of different prints. I'm really excited and looking forward to that. And if you want to know when it's going to happen, click like and subscribe, maybe hit that little bell. And this way you know exactly when new videos come out. Uh, I'm super excited about running some more prints through this, uh, how fast this thing is. I've got two or three things I've been modeling that I'm not quite sure if the dimensions are quite right or if they're going to snap together or if they're the right size. And when I put them on a disc, or when I ran them through the slicer at standard and low at 250 millimeters a second, one of the parts, which is a decent sized part, it's you know maybe a little bit bigger than this remote for the camera, uh, said it was going to take a half an hour print. <laughs> so that's awesome. I mean, to know in a half an hour if I need to go upstairs and tweak a file uh, to make sure it clicks in right in the uh, space is pretty exciting. So I am definitely looking forward to playing with this guy after the holidays. I hope again you guys have a good holiday or whatever you decide to celebrate or not celebrate, whatever. All right, guys, take it easy, and I will see you in the next video.